pushing buttons and pulling triggers. This is Gun Funny. Welcome to Gun Funny episode 352. Today I'm going to chat with Mike O'Dell from CMMG, discuss NYPD going after Trump's guns, highlight the new Ruck from Occam Defense, and talk about YouTube's new policy on firearms. I'm your host, Ava Flannell. Mike, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing awesome. Thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah, it's Friday. Although I'm sure you, you I'm assuming you probably aren't working this weekend, right? Like Friday actually means Friday. Friday does mean Friday for the most part, as long as I don't have an attend, uh, an event or something of that sort that I have to attend. And I'm free this weekend. So nice. Very cool. Well, as you guys know, the show comes out on Monday, but I do pre-record it and we are pre-recording this on a Friday, which I have to say this weekend, I for once don't have any plans. But the last couple of weekends, I've been working on my yard and I'm glad it's finally finished because I love doing it. But like it is... I feel like I got hit by a bus like the last two weeks. It's no joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yard work is it's uh, it's very rewarding uh, because you you can very easily see the fruits of your labor. Mm -hmm. uh, but doing it is it takes a toll. Kind of daunting. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I love mowing. I hate weed eating. Um, yeah. yeah. Or or weeding in general. And yeah. I have, I have so many ideas for things I want to do to my yard right now. Yeah. But then you're like, oh, but all the labor like you then you realize. Uh, so I don't know about you, but like when I, I bought a brand new house and I had to pay. This is the least expensive that I could find, but it was 30000 for landscaping. And we're not talking about a big plot of land like they're stacking these houses up next to each other but like after doing some landscaping i'm like okay maybe i can justify like why they're charging so much like this is not easy <laughs> you know i did that but, last year i had some things i wanted to have done around the house and i was like oh i could do that but then like it was during that really hot spell that we had mm -hmm. uh, towards the end of the summer and i'm like okay I'm just going to look and see how much it's going to cost to hire somebody. Yeah. Because I don't feel like being out there in the heat after, you know, a day at work or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I, I got my quote and uh, I'll just say it came in lower than I expected. Uh, and I tried not to sound too excited when asking how fast he could get to my house. <laughs> Very nice. I love it. All right. Real quick. Just a word from our sponsors. IWI US. So they are so nice. They've been a sponsor of mine now for years. I'm trying, I was trying to think the other day how long. I mean, it's probably been maybe five years, six years, but we've been working together for a long time. And I just, I really, not only do I love their products, but I really love the people behind the company. And just recently, so I've been, uh, I, I've kind of touched upon this that I, kind of started dabbling into politics and I created this independent expenditure committee where I'm ultimately trying to flip a bunch of seats in Colorado so that next year, if they are coming at us with these anti-gun bills, such as the quote unquote assault weapons ban bill, that Republicans will not be uh, so imbalanced and we won't be so much on the defense because right now Democrats in, in Colorado make up the super majority and is not balanced at all. And so, of course, in order for me to hit up all of these districts and campaign, I have to raise funds and be able to pay for these campaigns. So IWI, they, without even hesitation, they donated a TS-12, which by the way, by the time this show comes out, uh, there is going to be the opportunity to win a TS-12 shotgun, which is, uh, it's an awesome freaking shotgun. It definitely turns heads. They gave me a green one, an ODG colored shotgun to give away. That said, I've always wanted the green one and I have the black one. So I figured whoever wins this gun, I'm going to give them the option that they could either have mine, which is pretty new, or they have mine. We do a little trade or they can have the green. Either way, totally fine with me. But yeah, if you guys want to donate to this endeavor, which I, I know you guys might be thinking, oh, it's Colorado. It doesn't affect my state. I will say that this is spreading like a wildfire. If we don't put it out, it's just going to continue to spread throughout the United States. And they're using these anti-gun bills as blueprints and they're coming at a state level everywhere. So it really is in everyone's best interest to put out the fire as soon as possible. But you could go to dragomans.com and then purchase 
tickets for the giveaway. And for every $10, you get a entry. And then we will be drawing a lucky winner in a week. We're actually going to post on our social media when we're going to go live on our story so that you guys can watch with us and see us pick those names. But anyways, thank you to IWI if you guys want to check out their products or that TS-12 shotgun that I talked about. Freaking awesome. Holds 15 rounds, has that rotary tube. And um, you can just head on over to IWI.us. And then if you find anything in their web store, don't forget to use the code GUNFUNNY15, all one word. You'll get 15% off your entire order. Learn the things you never knew. On Deconstructing the Industry. Mike, thank you so much for joining me today. I've been a big fan of CMMG for a while, especially when you guys came out with the Banshee. That thing turned heads. That was like super popular. It still is. So I'm really excited to have you on the show and talk about CMMG. But before we get into what it is that you do for them and how the company got started, I want to know a little bit more about you and how you got into this industry. Oh, man. Uh, So just getting into the gun industry itself, uh, I was actually... I was in the automotive industry. I was working, uh, I've, I've always been in, you know, like home improvement, um, automotive stuff. And I was, uh, working, I was a manager for a local auto parts store. My district manager, uh, invited me to go out shooting one day. And I've always had like shotguns and like hunting rifles and stuff, but I was never really like an enthusiast, so to speak. And, uh, he's like, Hey, let's, let's go out and do a little, do a little bit of shooting. Uh, he brought a few handguns out. He had a friend that came out, brought some handguns. So I got an opportunity to try a lot of different handguns. And I was very quickly addicted to, you know, just the, you know, the recreational aspect of handgun shooting. And when I got into it, you could go to Walmart, buy like a hundred round box of Winchester white box for like nine bucks. Uh, so every time I would go to Walmart, I would just grab more nine millimeter and I would shoot so many rounds at the range. It was insane. And then I left the uh, automotive industry and actually went to go work for the range that I had become a member of. And I frequented all the time and I became the assistant manager there. And uh, then I left there and went to work for Midway USA. And I worked in their uh, contact center for a little while and over the phones was great. Uh, but I like the more personal connection of, you know, in person, like in a store. And then I went to go work for a local gun store. It's about 30 minutes from where I currently live. Uh, but it's a sister company mm-hmm. to CMMG. So the, uh, the brothers that and their wives that own CMMG also own this gun store. And, uh, I was actually hired on the big, the big Benghazi date. Uh, so I was hired on nine 11 of 12 didn't realize that the importance of that date at the time, other than being nine mm-hmm. 11. Uh, and I just kind of worked, uh, showed my work ethic, uh, really put in the time that was shortly after Sandy hook or Sandy hook happened shortly after me starting. And I just, I put in the work to make sure that of a morning, if we had a gun delivery the night before that, like when we opened, we would have guns, we would have ammo. we, we basically were like Black Friday every morning when we opened up. We had a line of people at the door ready to purchase guns. And I learned CMMG product really good from working there. Uh, and they started taking me to SHOT Show and everything. And I've just, uh, I, I've slowly worked from being a person they took to SHOT Show that worked at their retail store uh, to working my way to now I do PR and uh like brand partnerships and things of that sort so it's uh it, it's been a fun ride collectively i've been with them um well like i said since 2012 so this year will be 12 years i've been with the companies wow that's crazy because they started in 2002 correct correct okay yeah so they and how did they start like what is the history of like cmmg uh, well, the history, I mean, so yeah, we have two brothers and their wives. Um, so four people that own CMMG and they've always been firearms enthusiasts. Actually, uh, you know, we're, we're a lot alike for the fact that we were, they and myself are all kind of AK guys mm-hmm. and they used to do a lot of AKs and they also worked like in a printing shop, I believe in their, uh, at their dad's house or, uh, somewhere on the family property. Mm-hmm. And, 
they decided to go ahead into some firearms manufacturing. So they started kind of small. Uh, they were working for, uh, they were like assembling different parts and were making a lot of the different connections within the industry to, you know, get more parts, help other companies, you know, putting things together. And then as they were making all these contacts, they started getting contacts for stuff to be made for them. Uh, so you'd have lowers made and they, they would have things kind of outsourced uh, to their specs, brought in house, assembled, and then sold uh, primarily by boots on the ground at gun shows um, is where they really started off. They had a, they had a pretty good website that allows you to really customize your gun early on. And they did hit a lot of gun shows. And then after being at the gun shows, they saw, uh, since they were a manufacturer at a gun show, they started making contacts with local dealers and then they started selling to the local dealers. And then we just started growing from there. You know, a lot of the innovation, a lot of new, new changes and things that we would come up with uh, kind of kept us, being a little bit different than your standard AR company. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it was one of those things that, you know, our slogan is aimed to be different. And that's because, you know, we're, we're not satisfied with just another AR 15 and five, five, six, or, you know, whatever the, the kind of the run of the mill caliber is right now. We're, we're always looking at something different to, to make the, um, the AR continue to be a relevant platform for years to come. Yeah. Nice. I like that. And you guys definitely make some really cool stuff. What was your first design that you guys came out with? I mean, we had the traditional ARs, um, uh -huh. so we can't really say that was our design yeah. uh, per se. Um, and then, I mean, the first thing I would say that was like 100% our brainchild, you know, from start to finish was probably the Mark 47. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people refer to it as the mutant. Uh, so it was the AKAR hybrid, uh, this year, actually in December, it'll be 10 years old. Uh, yeah, so actually that's crazy. Cause I shot that when it first came out, I yeah. forgot all about that gun. Yeah. It, it, it's been fun. I mean, that's when I started going to shot show and stuff actually a little bit before that, but I remember the, I remember the Mark 47 being the first time I was at a shot show or an NRA show or something of that sort. And we had the big feature wall and it just it um, just showcased a single firearm being the Mark 47 and that thing just took off and has been, it's continued to be one of our more popular items. People just love it because we take it to many events like, you know, Iraq vet and a lot of different shoots. And I have taken it and just abused the tar out of it for years and it just continues to work for us. Hmm. It's impressive. And then after that, what did you guys come up with? Or actually, you know, let's just talk about like maybe your current lineup right now, because I'm on your website right now. I'm just like looking like essentially There's drooling. I know I'm like drooling over all these guns. <laughs> I'm like, okay, pick your draw your job. Because <laughs> yeah, I was like, um, oh, man, that's so cool. And then, of course, I went to like your, you know, the SBRs, too. And I was like, oh, man, that looks really cool, too. Like it just... There's something about an SBR that I just love. Yeah, it, they're, they're a ton of fun. I mean, and it's we we could get into the whole conversation of uh, do we think they should be on the NFA or not? Oh, I know, I know. It's so dumb. I yeah, don't get me started on that. It's it's you know, know. because the gun's like, shorter. Like, okay, do I poke this bear or not? But. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh! And then next thing you know, three hours later, and I'm still talking about, it, and you're like, I shouldn't have poked the bear. <laughs> well, I. I, I tend to go down those rabbit holes too, and I can totally dive into those conversations quite frequently. But you know, sometimes you just you got you got to pick your battles. I mean, fortunately, um, I'm sure with your audience, we've got a lot of people that we're kind of preaching to the choir. Mm -hmm, exactly. Obviously, obviously, we want to bring as many new people in as we can um, and help educate them and get them on our side because there are a lot of gun laws out there that are just dumb. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there there shouldn't be a fraction of them that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, going back to our product line, we, we have a lot of stuff to choose from. And for me, it, it's kind of second nature because I can just rattle off what they all are and what they mean. And uh, to some other people, it gets a little confusing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll, I'll try to, uh, I, I guess, keep it as simple as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to firearms themselves, we actually have four product lines. So we have the Banshee, the Resolute, the Endeavor, and the Descent. Uh, so the 
Banshee is simply put, it is our buffer operated ARs with barrels less than 16 inches. Uh, so that's going to be where your AR pistols and your short barrel rifles come into play. Uh, if it's more of a traditional buffer style system, the resolutes pretty simply put are our 16 inch guns. So when you think in your brain, AR 15, 16 inch barrel buttstock, that's what the resolute is. Endeavor is going to be more of our long range stuff. Uh, so those are typically going to come equipped with, you know, 18, 20, 24 inch barrels, depending on the caliber, uh, fixed stock, things of that sort. So those are kind of more of our like DMR type of setup. Mm -hmm. And then we have the descent, which is our newest product offering. We've only had out for a couple of years. Uh, and that is our new compact action. So initially when it came out, it was our bufferless system. So there was no need for the buffer tube. And, it, you know, we released it at the time that the, the pistol brace um, ruling kind of came out mm. and everybody was getting kind of, you know, worried about that. We're like, Hey, look, we have a gun that doesn't need it. Yeah. You know, so that was kind of where we, we introduced it there. It was like, look, Hey, we have these, uh, we have a six and a half inch barrel five, five, six. Why? Because we can. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, with no buffer tube or anything. And it, it's, it's really proven to be quite the platform for us. So it's evolved also from just being little six and a half inch pistols to complete 16 inch stocked varieties. Uh, you know, so you can have a side folding stock when it operates, uh, you know, encompassing a lot of different calibers. So, uh, it's, the descent is our, our newest, hottest uh, thing right now. And we're really focusing a lot of our current product releases on that or variants of because we've got we've got more stuff uh, cooking right now, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, the, the Banshee itself, uh, the popularity of AR pistols over the last few years mm -hmm. has been absolutely insane. So the, the Banshee has been hands down the the most popular and typically i mean i think i can't remember what the last count was i want to say we have collectively like 13 calibers i believe across all of our platforms and the banshee encompasses most every one of those uh but everybody wants a nine mil ar yeah um, and well, being able to have a little five inch barrel nine mil ar people are just and and we offer it in Glock mag, Sig mag, our conversion mags and Colt mags. So we, we have a variety of them too, which allow people to pick what suits them best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it makes sense, right? Like you can shoot your AR nine millimeter. It's not costing an arm and a leg. At least it wasn't. I mean, it's, we're not seeing 2019 prices yet, but it's come down a little bit, but it's, you know, it's not as much as like five, five, six and seven, six, two by 39. So um, I could understand that. Although I will say I'm eyeing this, the Descent, uh, Chamberlain 762 by 39. That just looks really nice. Yeah. It just, the, it's the, a beautiful Any gun. variance of the Mark 47 has been my baby for years. And yeah, the, the Mark 47 Descent. Um, yeah. I mean, even, even the longer barrel versions of it, even the 16 inch barrel versions of it still just, it, they look good and they shoot just as good too. Yeah. Um, that, that, that compact action that we've got in those now just, it is a slightly different recoil impulse when you shoot it. Um, and I know recoil is subjective to everybody that shoots and I sh shoot a ton and I'm not exactly the smallest guy. So I don't have as much uh, <laughs> of a problem with shooting large caliber guns very fast. Uh, but the recoil impulse on the new uh, compact action, just I've actually changed a lot of my personal like shtf guns uh i'm like okay uh i'm now going compact action with this my fiance's yeah. nine mil banshee turned into a nine mil descent you know, <laughs> nice i love yeah. that i'm gonna take a quick break talk about gideon objects If you guys are looking for a compact red dot for a pistol with the maximum field of view, check out Gideon's Omega Red Dot. 
It's got a huge round lens, so it's incredibly easy to find your target fast, and you never have to hunt around for your dot like you might with a smaller window. They're made from 7075 T6 aluminum and have 45 MOA of windage and elevation adjustment. They use the standard RMR Harlison mounting footprint and come with a Picatinny mount and popular mounting screws. You can get them with red or green 3 MOA dots or 45 MOA circles with 3 MOA dots. They have 10 brightness settings and shake awake, which is my favorite. Also, it has a top loading battery cherry so that you don't have to lose your zero when you have to change out the battery. Green and red circle dots are in stock right now for $2.29. Check it out, gideonoptics.com. Don't forget to use the code GUNFUNNY, all one word, and that's getting you 10% off your entire order. Tell me about the 22 ARC. I've noticed that that's starting to increase in popularity, and I will say I don't have any experience with that caliber. Have you noticed that there's quite a bit of popularity for that caliber? I think it's still fairly new. Uh, I don't know that it, it's kind of strange because you get a lot of new calibers that they have a very specific marker they're going for, uh, you know, varmint hunting or something of that sort uh, and bringing a lot of that type of stuff into the AR platform. So it, like I said, it, it, it's still new enough that personally, I'm not seeing a lot of draw toward it just yet. But the people that really know what it is uh, are definitely gravitating toward it. Uh, so it's it, that, that's kind of one of the things with us is, you know, we we were one of those companies that we're always quick to adopt a new caliber. We have companies that will come out to us all the time and they're like, hey, we're going to be introducing a new caliber. Are you interested in making a gun in it? We're like, sure. <laughs> uh, and, you know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. We've had a few uh, calibers that we've done this with in the past. And unfortunately, they were kind of short lived. And, you know, we we live and learn. But the, the 22 arc uh, definitely shows some promise. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just unfortunately, ballistically and everything, I'm I'm probably not the best person to, to quote any specs on them just because yeah. it, it's not one of those ones that I am as versed with. Like it doesn't, for me personally, it doesn't uh, fit a particular need that I have, but we've definitely had a lot of people uh, come out looking for them. We've actually had a couple of reviewers are like, Hey, this really seems interesting. I would like to you know take a look at this. We're like, oh, okay, awesome. We yeah. would love you to. <laughs> You know, I also what I find interesting, too, is I've noticed, especially when it comes to the gun industry, is people don't love change. So anytime there's a new caliber, some of them, some people are really excited about it. I don't want to say everyone. Some people are really excited and others are like, what do we need that for? You know, like we're good with what we got. And it's just I don't know. I think it's nice. I really love the innovation when it comes to anything gun related, whether it's ammo or guns or optics or any type of gear. I think it's awesome just to see people constantly pushing sort of the the envelope on things. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, I, I'll I'll be the first to admit I'm one of those people that kind of falls in the category of I'm a little resistant to change oh, at times. Too. Mike, you're a little fud, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, you know, but I also have a, 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 a real good place of appreciation for it because coming up with new platforms and new calibers and everything and, and being able to see from an engineering side uh, and a manufacturing side, okay, what challenges did that new cartridge pose for us? Okay. So that might, that may have made us come up with a new design or a technology or something really simple that we may not have thought of before, but we're like, okay, there's now a problem uh, with this. So we need to come up with a fix for that. And then we fix that. And then we realize, Hey, that actually improves all these other things we previously had. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it, it's a great, it's a great thing to have and be able to constantly look at all this innovation and all these new calibers and stuff, because it helps us as a company and, uh, you know, grow and it just helps the industry grow because, you know, there are people that, you know, they, they might be that FUD out there that they're like, eh, what do I need this for? And then you introduce it in the cartridge that they're, re- that they really love. And they're like, okay, yeah, well, maybe, maybe I do look at this now. Yeah, exactly. I noticed on CMMG's website, you guys also sell other stuff other than guns. Like you have this speed loader, which is really interesting. Is that the McFadden lightning loader you're looking at by chance? Yeah. Yeah, is I that- love that thing. Uh, for people that hate loading 22 magazines, especially in the AR platform, 
that is an incredible speed loader. We take that thing to events and it, <laughs> it, it makes loading magazines for 22, not daunting. Uh, I, I was going to say something a little more expletive, but <laughs> <laughs> I decided to, to kind of step back there a second, but yeah, loading, loading 22 magazines is not fun. Uh, especially when you need, when they unload so much. Oh, faster I know. Than they load. Yeah, um, I know. I can only imagine too, like doing an event and you're working, you know, the booth and, you know, people can come and try out your products and you're just sitting there loading max. Like I would hate to have that job. I hate loading magazines. Even if I have a speed loader, I'm just like, oh, you know, but I mean, speed loaders absolutely make it a lot easier, but either way, yeah. I would hate to just be the person that's just sitting there loading mag after mag after mag. Well, it took me a while to realize it, but one of the things I have come to terms with in the last couple of years is if I'm at an event and somebody is there and they paid very little money, um, if any, you make them load. The <laughs> uh, I'm like, you know what? You're shooting this gun for free. You'll load the magazine. Won't you? <laughs> People don't care. They're like, oh, hell yeah, I'll load that magazine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, that's one of the ways I actually start engaging people in the line. I'll be like, okay, what are you thinking about shooting? They're like, what do you have? I'll, I can go over the spiel of what guns I have for them to try out. And I'm like, I want to try this. So I'll grab that magazine. I'm like, all right, throw 10 rounds in this magazine. And when you get up to the line, shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's actually uh, pretty smart because then it keeps them engaged too. And they don't feel like they're waiting in line as long. Yeah. Hmm. So it, it, it's a lot of fun. It, it, forever, we really catered to uh us trying to load all the magazines for everybody as much as we could but it just uh we we always have uh, because of a full auto mark 47 that we have uh we always have a a very long line mm -hmm. at most events that we go to and it it does seem to be endless at times loading magazines uh so yeah speed loaders um you know the the up lulas and stuff like that for handgun magazines glock magazines even ar magazines but that lightning loader from mcfadden is an incredible loader hmm, and, okay so i was thinking you know, that for some reason i was thinking you guys made it but it's from mcfadden yeah uh, okay. yeah I, I wish we could take credit for that one so it is it is made by an outside company so we do uh we do have some third party party products on our website uh yeah. just things that you know will support our gun sales mm -hmm. um but you know on top of the firearms you know one of the things that people don't always realize too is we sell all the parts also uh so from a single detent and spring all the way up to a complete gun uh, we have everything available that you would need. I mean, we sell all that stuff individually. We sell a lot of individual parts in bulk to dealers because you know, there's a lot of people out there that like building AR-15s. And mm -hmm. inevitably, when you're building, you're going to have a spring that decides it wants to find low Earth orbit. And yeah. now you're now you're like, oh, I don't have another one of those. Yeah. And as opposed to going and buying a whole new kit. Ideally, it's like if I can just go somewhere and buy a single spring and we do that also. Yeah. So, you know, it's up, complete uppers, complete lowers, complete guns and all the parts in between. I actually knew that because I bought a lower, a nine millimeter lower from you guys. And this is when, I mean, I did, I put together kind of a PCC before it was really taken off. And you guys were one of the few that offered that nine millimeter lower. And so I used that and I still have the gun. It was with the first nine millimeter AR that I put together. Awesome. Nine yeah. ARs are a ton of fun and they're just, they're, yeah. The, I was, the odd thing is too, is if you get one of the traditional blowback systems, it, they have a surprising amount of recoil because you're not using mm -hmm. the gas to yeah. support it. And, and you shoot it and you're like, why did that just push into my know. shoulder more than a five, five, six? Or you watch it, yourself. You, you, in my case, I record videos, you know, of me shooting and I'm like, why does it look like I'm shooting like a much bigger caliber? And right? like, I'm like, why do I look like a little biatch, you know, trying to shoot this <laughs> right now? <laughs> but so I'm glad you said that. But, um, yeah, it, it's surprising if you shoot a, a standard blowback nine millimeter for the first time and you've shot regular five, five, sixes, you're like, hang on something's not right here. And that's, that's one of the reasons why we also came up with the, you know, I guess it wasn't a reason why we came out with the radio delay blowback in our 45 and a lot of our PCCs. Uh, it was just an added benefit. So we, we came up with a new uh, operating system in a 45 when we came out with it and it allows for significantly less reciprocating mass on the bolt carrier and the buffer. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't get that felt impact like you do in a traditional nine mil. Very cool. And All we right. also sell suppressors and we actually just, uh, 
just live on the website yesterday, we have a new 22 suppressor. Oh, uh, really? Live. And if this is coming out on Monday, yeah, then it tomorrow is. we'll have a whole new 5.7 uh, suppressor coming out that also does 4.6. So, Oh, uh, very nice. That's cool. Yeah, so we're we're uh, the twenty two can we're really happy about because uh, we're able to do one hundred percent of it in house. So we've over the last few years we've really we've uh, we've over doubled our factory size, and we've brought a lot more machining in house. And we're like, hey, we can make our own twenty two suppressor, you know, one hundred percent in house without having to outsource some of the stuff. Mm-hmm. And if this takes off, if the twenty two can takes off as good as we hope it is going to. Um, we're probably going to start looking at doing a lot more, um, a lot more stuff in the house with our own suppressors. Because mm-hmm. let's face it, right now with this short of wait times as there oh, are, yeah. with those, you can't get suppressors. I mean, I've got a couple on back order. Like I'm literally waiting for my local gun shop to get them in, so I can do paperwork on them. Mm-hmm. So it's it's taken significantly longer for the shop to get them than it's going to take for me to get my forms approved. Yeah, I'm actually just looking at that. So it's called uh, the Def Cam. Def Can 22 and MSRP is 275, which is really good for 22 can. But yeah, these, I mean, they look nice. Like you, I started pay, paying attention to even the designs, like the outside designs of, of the can. Cause it's like, okay, how can you differentiate your cylinder, you know, can from the next person's? And I don't know. I just started paying attention to that stuff, but it looks really cool. Yeah. And if you look at our like nine mil, um, 45, five, yeah. five, six and 30 cal cans, there's definitely an aesthetic to those. Mm-hmm. Um, they really mimic, um, like yeah. our Vanguard and our designs on our guns. That's, that's actually what I was talking about when I was like, yeah, that looks really cool. Cause the 22 is just kind of plain. <laughs> so you're like, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Ava. Yeah. It looks really cool. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. 22 is 22. Yeah. Um, um, there, there's, there's not a lot of real estate on a 22 can to do a lot of uh, design, uh, especially if you want to really keep that at a, at a good price point. Mm-hmm. too. Absolutely. Uh, so sometimes, sometimes like you, you just have to hit a spot in the market and we feel, you know, that 275 price point is definitely a good price point in the market. Um, and you don't need a lot of frills. You just need it to work. Absolutely. Um, and that's what that particular one does. It's, uh, yeah, I, I out doing a video for that, uh, which will come live on Tuesday. Also, I believe <laughs> after I got done shooting, I'm like, yep, I definitely need 22. Again. <laughs> you <laughs> just, just, you just like put it in your pocket and walk away. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> no. Okay. So kind of wrapping up, what are your future plans? Like, are there any, I guess you just shared, you know, two of the the cans that came out this week, but is there anything else that you can share with us? Uh, we have a ton more stuff coming out this year. We uh, we have, I, I don't know that I can specifically say what it is, um, but I will say um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give a date um, that actually isn't even public knowledge yet. Uh, but July 9th, you're going to see a new product from us. We've We've been teasing it and hinting it a little bit in some of our socials. Some people have picked up on it. Some people haven't. But July 9th, you're going to see a whole new platform from us. And then in, I think in August, um, you're going to see, you're going to see a few more uh, new models, including something in a new caliber we've never offered before. Hmm. And, and probably come September, you're going to see yet another variant of those. Um, I'm just trying to think. And then, uh, well, I mean, we, it, it, it's, it's so much fun with our engineers cause they're always working on stuff. And sometimes when we release a new product, it almost seems old to us because we may have been working on it for a year, year and a half, and yeah. we're already focusing on the next couple releases. And we're like, Oh yeah, this one just happens to be out now. But yeah, I mean, I know we've, we've got another big product release that I think we're as of right now is slated for like April of next year. Uh, cause we just still have a lot more T and E and work that needs to be done on it. So. Very cool. Awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing what all that is. Um, can you just let listeners know where they can find you online, where they can check out products, social media, all of that good stuff. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty easy. I say it kind of fast sometimes cause I'm so used to saying it, but it's literally just cmmg.com. And most of our socials, I believe our uh, Instagram and our X is at CMMG Inc. Um, Our YouTube is at CMMG. 
I believe we also have uh, Rumble and a few of the other places. Uh, I don't have those committed to memory, but chances are they're probably just at CMMG or at CMMG Inc. Right. Okay, perfect. And also just something that came to mind real quick. So the letter CMMG, does that stand for the owner's names by chance? It does not. Oh, okay. I was just um, wondering. I was like, hey, I just totally missed that. That went over my head, but I guess it didn't then. <laughs> no, it, no, it's uh, it, the funny thing is like in one of our early, uh, early shot shows, uh, we had a reporter and he reported it as Central Missouri Machine Gun. And everybody just kind of goes to that. Like, I don't know why, but their brain, like I, before I even worked for CMMG, I heard that. And for some reason, my brain was trying to figure out what it could stand for. And I'm like, well, they're right dab smack in the middle of Missouri. So that's central Missouri and they make machine guns. So maybe it's make central Missouri machine gun. And it's not, <laughs> but uh, you're going to see online everywhere. People saying that that's what it is. And we, we have fun with it. Uh, there is a, uh, there is a hidden meaning, uh, but it's one of those things that we jokingly say, I can tell you, but I'd have to kill you or, you know, it's classified yeah. type of thing. So it's, it's one of those fun little industry secrets. Uh, it's out there in the right circles, but I, I typically will never state it publicly. Okay. <laughs> so it means a bunch of bad words. Got it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. All right, cool. Well, thank you for that. No. Um, all right. So moving forward, Mantis. If you haven't checked out the Blackbeard X yet, you definitely need to. It gives you the capability of the Mantis X along with the trigger reset of the Blackbeard so that you don't have to rack the charging handle on your AR for every shot. They also came out with a version for the SIG MCX as well. In addition to the normal analysis, it also gives you analysis based on your movement. It tracks your delay to get on the target and gives you metrics on how you can increase your speed without affecting accuracy. It shows you how much over travel on target target transitions and the path of transition, all these go together to help you get faster and more accurate, which is incredibly important, especially when you're doing, you know, competitions or let's say even for self-defense, obviously, you know, minutes might cost you your life. You can also compare your progress to uh, friends. So you can create these little groups too, which is a lot of fun. So yeah, check it out, mantisx.com, and they have the Blackbeard, which just allows you to reset, but then the Blackbeard X is the analysis uh, capability. So those are the, the two differences. But again, mantisx.com. Politics. What is going on in the world today? It's political AF. Today in politics, so Trump permit revoked. Uh, so the New York Police Department moved to revoke President Trump's concealed carry permit following the sham conviction on 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. For one, there was no felony. They alleged multiple misdemeanors and the intent to hide them was a felony. They did not even have clear charges of a crime in the trial or actual evidence that any crime occurred and multiple times violated legal procedure in the case. Former uh, Attorney General Bill Maher, who served for Trump, but it came out after that he actively conspired against him in multiple legal matters while in office and has been a very harsh critic of him since, came out saying that this trial is an abomination. Barr said, quote, I actually was surprised that they went ahead with the case because there really was nothing there. There was no crime there and they never were able to really articulate it until after the defense rested its case. I wasn't surprised by the verdict because the way that the case was conducted, there was never really any discipline on trying to make the prosecutor establish what the elements of the crime were and what evidence he had to do it. It was just assumed from the beginning that there was some kind of federal election campaign violation, which there wasn't. So this case is going to be overruled because there are multiple errors and violations of constitutional rights. Regardless of the actual facts of the case and whether it may be overturned, NYPD has jumped on taking away his gun rights. Trump has three firearms registered in New York under his permit. He already surrendered two of them, while the third was legally transferred to Florida to an FFL. Given the track record of the NYPD, though, chances are he probably will never see those guns, even if the charges are in fact overturned. 
Mike, you and I, we were talking before the show started and the, you brought up a good point. But before we bring up that point, one thing that I do want to say is it sounds like a lot of Americans are just up in arms about this. Like they are just really mad as to how this whole thing unfolded. And I think was it like in one day there was like 53 the first day that uh, this came out, he raised 53 million. But I guess now as of Thursday night, Trump has raised over 400 million dollars. Wow. Which is crazy. I didn't realize that he'd raised that much more. I mean, I thought 53 million was a lot. But one thing that you raised up a good point is, you know, people are always wondering, like, OK, well, can felons, you know, have their gun rights restored? And if that's the case, like, what kind of felonies are we talking about? You know, like if it if it's a, you know, like a, a violent felony, if it's, you know, like a domestic violence felony, like there's a lot of there's a lot of different felonies that you could get. And at what point do you think somebody should have their gun rights restored? Or is there also should so much time pass? And then after that time, they can have their their rights restored? Because I know a lot of people, not a lot of people, but I know some people, I've heard some stories now, you know, being a teacher for over a decade, you hear all kinds of stuff. And, you know, people have done some stupid things when they were little, like when they were in their 20s. And then now they're like in their... 50s, 60s, and they still can't own a gun because of that. Yeah, I mean, we we've all done dumb things when we were younger. Yeah, the uh, only the only thing is, is they didn't have cameras and social media. <laughs> yeah, thank and, and God. The thing is, some of us got caught, some of us didn't. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> I mean, like, we we've all done some really dumb things in our lives, uh, and you know there are there are those that are you know violent felons, and then there are those that have something due to monetary reasons uh it became a felony because it it was you know valued over a set amount um you know i i've got a, a good friend of mine that i had all through high school that you know because of back child support he got a felony conviction mm -hmm. you know i'm like really so you're you're taking away his right to vote you're taking away his ability to defend himself and his family because he couldn't pay child support when he was younger, you know, um, that it's like, okay, there, there's definitely, I, I, I honestly believe, and again, this is me speaking, you know, Mike personally, there's definitely got to be a, a line drawn somewhere. You know, it, when you look at felony convictions too, I mean, we could go into that whole, uh, you know, rabbit hole of, okay, when they've paid their dues, and they are released back, you know, so, so, say you had somebody that was in prison for whatever reason, even if it was like a white collar crime and they have quote unquote paid their dues, they've been quote unquote rehabilitated and they are released back into the public. Mm -hmm. They, they finished their parole or, you know, whatever it is, they no longer have to report to a parole officer. They are, you know, a member of the community and they're a contributing member of the community. Where is that line? That, you know, hey, this person is, you know, th they paid their dues. They made a mistake. You know, they didn't, you know, I, I don't know. There, yeah. there's so many, it, it, there, are, there are definitely people that it, this is probably not going to be a popular opinion, uh, but there are definitely felons out there, violent criminals that show no remorse and stuff that I am wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly say, yeah, you don't need to have your rights back. Mm -hmm. Even as much as I want to. Be able to say, well, no, the but it, Second Amendment shouldn't have any stipulations. Yeah, no, I'm. I actually agree with you on that because at the end of the day, one of the biggest reasons that, that we own guns is to protect ourselves against criminals or against evil. And so it's like, why would we? Somebody just, you know, created or committed this atrocious crime, this horrible, violent act, and then let's say they do their time. Why? would we restore like they obviously have that evil within them and so i have to believe that like in that case i'm like uh i wouldn't you know i'm not the last thing i'd want to do is now arm them because they did some time in jail and, and they you know said that they learned their lesson you know but it's again it's it's there's so many different like so many gray areas that it's really difficult to pinpoint and i would hate to be the person that comes up with you know i guess the the criteria for, you know, for like who's allowed and who's not, but I don't know. And if, if you look at Trump's conviction uh, and you look and see, I mean, what they brought to trial 
were not felonies. Mm hmm. You know, they were misdemeanors that the statute of limitations had long kind of gone, gone, you know, expired on. But you've got to the point that somebody being very vindictive wanted him to suffer and they made arbitrary felonies, essentially. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like they they pulled them out of thin air. They're like, well, I mean, they literally took one plus one and got 26. Exactly. I, I don't know. <laughs> or 34 in this case. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, I agree. So, I mean, so in a case like that, I mean, man, I mean, I, I can see why people are so upset mm -hmm. and why people are supporting him so much is because, I mean, this, in my opinion, this really shows how our judicial system is broken. Exactly. Um, you know, they're, they're, if they can go after somebody just because they want to and however it looks, I, I don't think there was any fairness in any of this. Yeah. It was definitely, uh, I saw, um, I think it was like Newsmax, um, that they had a report that says, uh, blind justice is dead. And I, I couldn't agree more because justice is supposed to be blind. You're supposed to be able to take the facts and weigh them. Mm -hmm. And whichever one is the side that it leans toward is how you go. Mm -hmm. Um, but in this case, justice isn't blind. They're watching the opposition intentionally weigh the wrong side and they're just it, it's not blind they're turning a blind eye to it is exactly what it is. absolutely yep well said this segment is brought to you from rose by sig sour I'm here with Babes Gregoulis. She attended the Boca Raton retreat. And Babes, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. All right. So just kind of getting into things. So I have to know, why did you do the Rose retreat? I wanted to get fitted by knowledgeable women for concealed carry. I wanted to make concealed carry my uniform. I wanted to get education connections with shooting classes for events with other women. And I wanted to have fun. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of have an interesting story. So you didn't really know much about the Rose or Lena Michalek. You just went to a gun store. They recommended this gun and you were like, yeah, whatever. I don't really care what it looks like. You know, I'd say, but you liked the gun, you bought it. And then after you, you know, when you buy the Rose firearm, whether it's the 380 or the nine millimeter, it comes in this whole package with all these other goodies in it. And then that's when you kind of started to dive into it and you were like, oh, here's Lena. And then you realize that they also offer retreats, correct? Correct. I had no idea who Lena was. I was looking for a gun with an optic. I like the Romeo Zero optic. I like the size of it. And I could care less what it looked like yeah. if it was pink or had a rose on it. But I had no idea who Lena was and the whole rose community had no concept. Clicked on the link and a whole world opened up to me, saw the rose retreat. And I thought, my Lord, that looks like my dream vacation. I get to go to Boca to a luxury resort. I definitely needed to get away from my everyday life and be with like-minded women and shoot and get instruction. And I thought, wow, this could be an amazing time, which it was. Yeah. So give me a little bit of details about the trip, because I was told that this one was going to be bougie. And when I heard this, I'm like, how could, what could they possibly do that would be any bougier? Because when I went on the Nashville retreat, I was like, wow, they went all out. I mean, every little detail, everything that they did was just like amazing. And super bougie. So I'm like, okay, they're labeling this one bougie. I'm like, what do they have in store for this? So I'm really curious, like, if you can just give us some details of the trip. I guess I didn't have any expectations where you had a base to go with. I didn't have any expectations. I looked up online about Boca Resort, the Boca Raton Resort. I had been to Boca before because we had lived in Florida for a time. So I knew it was a, you know, high level hotel. But again, with COVID now, things that used to be, what are they going to be now? Like now, I didn't have expectations. But I think which really surprised me, not going with expectations, which I thought was a good thing. So I wouldn't be disappointed in anything, 
The hotel atmosphere was amazing, but the SIG people, they were so together. They were totally congealed. They all worked so well together and everything they did, they were proud of and they did to the utmost. Every T was crossed, every I was dotted. So I honestly didn't even look at what was going to be going on as far as the dress. I got the email that said that you had a white night, you were going to have a gala, and it was going to be the 20s. But my life is so crazy with doing for others and taking care of other people. I never have time for me. So literally the night before, I'm looking at the email of what I'm supposed to pack. And I had, again, no expectations. So I'm like, okay, I better get ready for these things. So when I got there, for example, we had one night, I guess was at the Flamingo. That was the first night they had all these cocktails that were specifically made for the rose. So down to the cocktail with the ingredients to the color, it was outdoors. The food was amazing. And I am really, really picky. So their food Every venue we had was so well done, so put together. It wasn't just haphazard. It was all great ingredients. And each event was so well planned from the atmosphere to down to the details of the napkins, to the color, to the music. It was all perfection. Wow. That's crazy. So I didn't know that they had, I'm assuming they had pink drinks. You know, if they had cocktails that were went Raspberry. with the... Okay. They were raspberry, they were pink, and we had like a martini and another one, and they were raspberry and pink. And wow. again, really nice drinks. It wasn't just the color, the ingredients, everything was so well thought out. Yeah, that's crazy. And then also, I'm just kind of chuckling to myself because you packed the night before, whereas I would be looking at the list and I'm like, okay, <laughs> I need a white dress because most people don't own a white dress, no. you know? And so. I didn't. But she said the thing that was nice that I think also got from the retreat, everything's flexible. It said white, but it said be creative. So I have traveled a lot where I've bought a lot of different clothes that I have my uniform. So I have a lot of lily clothes. So it was like, okay, I have a white jacket I can wear. And then, you know, it said be creative. So people really were creative. There was no had to be this way, had to be that way. People were all over the gamut, which was great. It made everybody feel comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And then last question. So what was your firearms experience before the retreat? I really didn't have any instruction. When 911 happened, I was working on a Navy military base and I was dating a Navy guy. And when 911 happened, he was like, you know, they're really getting ready for war. And he's like, you need to come out to the range with me, babe. So he took me out and he was a big guy and I'm a little person. And the first thing that happened, because I'm always in lily clothes, is a casing went down the front of my shirt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was like a negative experience. But yeah. anyway... I really loved shooting, but the next thing I knew, as little bit as I did, he was deployed. So I really didn't have anybody. I didn't grow up with it, didn't have anybody in my life, but I loved it. So I just would go out to ranges and rent guns and things. And there were never any women. It was always guys, um, kind of like I'm in South Carolina. So they might be little country places. And, you know, a guy might look at you and, maybe more interested in who you are as a female being there, either that they didn't think you belong there Mm -hmm. or they were trying to kind of come on to you. So they might tell you how to do something, but it was their perspective. It wasn't anybody really giving me instruction. So I would go, but never really had any instruction. And then about a year or so ago, I was again, just going out target shooting, trying different guns and stuff. And there was a man in a bay near me who was instructing somebody and they never fired a shot or anything. And he was so patient with the woman. And I thought, well, this is a different kind of a guy. So when he was done with the lady, I said, are you an instructor? And he said, yes. And his name was Jay Ruiz. Want to shout out to him. And I asked him if he was an instructor and could I hire him. So he, I was able to hire him about a year ago and we've been able to work here and there. And the biggest thing he taught me over the last so many months that we've been able to connect is trigger control. And that's been life changing. So other than that, I've tried to join women's groups and find other women to do things with, but haven't really found it. So that's why I was really thrilled to connect with the Rose retreat and meet other women and get instruction from other women. Perfect. I love that. 
All right. Well, um, we will continue on with your interview for the next two episodes. But until then, if you guys are interested in finding out more about Sig Sauer Rose, head on over to SigSauer.com forward slash Rose. And then also, if you guys are on Facebook, I highly recommend joining the Rose Community Facebook group. It'll ask you a few questions. You can let them know that I sent you, but it's just a really great group of women and they just share all kinds of, you know, tips and, and topics. And we talk about anything and everything. So I highly recommend checking that out. Tactic Talk. Discussing popular guns and gear. Love it? Hate it? Find out now. Today in Tacti Talk, Occam brings the ruck. Occam Defense, who I had on the show years ago, they're known for building rock solid AKs and their free float handguards. They recently released something cool for the Ruger American. The Ruger American is an affordable ranch rifle that you can get in 762 by 39, among other calibers. They're popular truck guns in a lot of rural areas, especially in the restrictive states because they have bigger mags and it's legal because they're bolt action. The 762 by 39 and 65 Grendel versions have a big drawback, though. They use the proprietary Mini 30 mags, which are not popular, not known for reliability, and they're pretty expensive when you can find them. AK mags, though, are known for extreme reliability and practically grow on trees at a great price, unless we're talking about rare Bakelite mags, which they're not importing anymore. Occam designed a new bottom metal to make the 7.62x39 and 6.5 Grendel Ruger Americans compatible with one of the most readily available mags in the world. They work with all standard AKM style mags, including the Magpul versions, though slight adjustments for perfect operation might be needed for the Magpul mags. A standard stamp AKM mag latch version goes for $199 and a billet fat bottom version for $259. There's also a titanium fat bottom version if you want to cut weight. They install without any gunsmithing. The most that you have to do is adjust the amount of shims used to get perfect lockup and release on the mag. They've apparently already been a big hit since the standard and titanium versions are out of stock right now, but they do have the billet fat bottom available. Check it out, OccamDefense.com. But that is actually really cool. And I always think that it's, you know, it's great when not only do you have the magazines already, like most people already own these magazines. And so you don't have to go out and buy, you know, all these different magazines. Cause I don't know about you, but I, so I have a huge gun basement, not even a gun room. And even my sister, she came over yesterday so that we could record this video. And she's like, man, you have stuff everywhere. Like I have an entire room dedicated to ammo at this point ammo and gun parts. And then, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It's gotten out of hand. But anyway, so my guns, I typically don't like to keep the magazines in them because, you know, just so that people can verify that they're unloaded. So I have this huge, like just this huge plastic bin of magazines. And I've a few times, like I'll get bored and I'll try to go through it and sort it out and like put them in Ziploc bags and, you know, label like what guns they go to. But it just eventually gets out of hand, especially when I'm recording content with multiple guns. So like this would just be so easy, like cool, just grab an AK mag and I'm ready to go. Not to mention the expense because some of these magazines can be like really, really spendy, which is always a downside to getting some of these guns. Oh yeah. I mean, getting, it, it, it's funny. My OCD kicked in last when you were talking about, you know, having all your magazines scattered about, cause yeah, I'm I definitely one of those people that I have bins like this bin is five, five, six magazines. Yeah. This bin is AK magazines. <gasps> and then when I go to the range and I come back and they're all in the range bag, oh, just to, I know. I'm like, Oh, that's bugging the crap. I know. Out of and it's almost, <laughs> it's almost like you don't even want to go to the range. Like, like after everything is, you know, cause every now and then I'm like, all right, I need to clean up my basement. And so I go through and everything's so nice. And, you know, and then I have my, uh, my whole like real avid, you know, my, my workbench with all the real avid stuff on one corner and everything's just like oh, in pristine. And it's like, I'm telling you, like, it looks like a bachelor pad. Like, I think some guys come to my house and they're just like, oh, you know, like, this Jealous. is you. Like, you got this. Yeah, because I got this nice setup. 
But it's like you almost one, you're hesitant to go to the range because you're like, cool, cool. Now I have to put everything in bags and get ammo and magazines and it's going to make a mess because then when you come back from the range, you got to put it all away. And then you're also kind of hesitant to even work on guns because you're like, man, I just cleaned my entire workbench and put everything in its place. But I mean, that said, obviously, I still do it. I've been doing it now for over 10 years. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you what, you were just speaking of Occam Defense, and I'll tell you what, I personally use their little uh, DIY lube kits, like their little syringes. Oh, I'll have to check those are, out. Those things are perfect for throwing in a range bag. So, like, if you have a particular oil or grease or something of that sort uh, that you like to use, but you don't want to carry that full bottle in your range bag with you, mm-hmm. they have, like, it's for lack of a better description, it's like little portable syringes that will actually store in themselves when you're not using them. Um, but they have a fill kit that you can have like, okay, this one is say, this is like, you know, ALG go juice. And this one is your oil. And this one might be a oh, CLP. Nice. And you can literally just fill these little syringes, stick them in your range bag. And you just have little portable doses uh, to use on the range. So uh, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Those are great little portable kits. Cause that obviously way can- some stuff works better than others for certain guns. So yeah, that's like, yeah, I mean, That's, so, I mean, you got an all-metal frame 1911. Well, you're going to probably want more of a grease on yeah, that. You've exactly. got a Glock. Well, it literally takes four dots of oil somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, but, yeah, they're great little kits. And I, me being an AK guy, I've looked at a lot of their parts for a while. So Yeah. All right, cool. I'll have to check that out. All right. And then lastly, so Gators. I don't know. Gators, man, they are just on a roll coming out with all the different lenses, different frames. I mean, just everything. Like every time I turn around, they have some different variation. They have something coming out in a few weeks that I'm excited to share with you guys. Just actually, it's funny. I have this running joke with them because they're like, yeah, just take some lifestyle pictures. It could be anything. Like it doesn't have to be you on the range. And that's because I do wear these glasses now. Like I live in these glasses and I have like 20 pairs in my car and just everywhere. And so I've been joking around. I'm like, hey, look at me now. I'm watering my plants or look at me. I'm plant shopping or look, I'm gardening. Okay. Now I'm, you know, look, I'm eating lunch in my glasses (laughs) and just I'm driving my car. And, you know, I'm like, is this, is this lifestyle photos enough for you? But I don't know, it's just kind of funny. But the truth is, is like if you guys are just looking for some like really good quality glasses that you could also wear on the range, you definitely want to check out Gators. Um, Mike, have you ever tried out Gators? I have tried Gators. Uh, I have to, I have to shift things a little bit more recently with wearing uh, prescription lenses. Mm. Uh, so that is one of the nice things they do offer prescription lenses. So they unfortunately, do. I, I haven't you know, gone, gone down the rabbit hole of, of seeing what it would take to get a pair of theirs, but I have worn Gators previously when I would wear contacts or before I needed corrective lenses. Yeah. Uh, they're very solid glasses. Yeah. I thought you were going to say you had to shift stuff around to fit your face. And I was like, oh, a hundred percent. Like I always do. I, first thing I do when I get a pair of gaiters is I lift up the nose pieces. Cause I don't want to, I think the way that my face is shaped, it feels like it's like leaning on my cheeks. So I, you know, push up the nose pieces so that I lift the glasses up and then I have like a smaller head. So I like kind of, you know, but it's like the whole thing, everything's adjustable. So it, it will fit your face really well, but check it out. Use the URL gators.com forward slash ava ava15 and that url will get you 15 percent off your entire order stupid funny cool interesting awesome as f- never mind af all right last segment so youtube goes after guns which what is new so recently YouTube once again declared their blatant bias against guns and clear hatred of 2A rights in their latest community guidelines update. The new policy was announced this week and takes effect on June 18th and will be retroactive. Anti-gun groups and politicians have been pressuring Google to change its policy and Google has sided with them. The new policy doesn't specifically ban any content that wasn't already banned, though anyone with the channel knows they frequently immediately demonetize any gun content, even when it clearly doesn't violate the rules. And then if you fight it, it takes a long time for them to reapprove it. And then at that point, 
all the views have already taken place and you've pretty much missed out on any sort of monetization that you would have made. Ask me how I know. Uh, So according to the policy, the biggest thing that will happen is anything deemed inappropriate will be age restricted. So it goes into all of these things, but essentially anything showing the use of handmade firearms, automatic firearms, and certain firearm accessories or content showing how to remove safety devices will be age restricted. Any part of the change will make it age restricted if it's promoting the sale of firearms or certain accessories. The big reason for the change is it drastically limits reach and prevents videos from being recommended by the algorithm and any embedded videos and other web pages won't play since you have to sign in and use an age verified user to see it. Legacy media companies, of course, get a quote unquote public interest content exception, so they won't be affected and will continue to earn full revenue. The new rule is clearly designed to target gun channels even more than they already have been, which I mean, they've like really cracked down. And I also have to be very cognizant of what I do when I'm recording a video, because I think even inserting a magazine into your gun is like they can't do anymore. Now I'm like, okay, cool. Full autos. Like I shoot full autos pretty often. Um, What classifies as a handmade firearm? I mean, it's just, you know, you can't show anything. Like I used to tell my students to go to YouTube and just search for the make and the model of their firearm. And they'll have somebody, you know, they'll pick a video where they can see, you know, somebody taking the gun apart and cleaning it. And they show you exactly because sometimes the manual can be kind of confusing. It sounds like you need like three hands to disassemble everything at once. And unfortunately, they're doing away with that stuff, which they already have. This isn't anything new, but they continue to crack down. And the thing is, is you you might wonder, like, why haven't they just completely, you know, prevented gun channels altogether from posting? It's because they're making too much money. Like they're still doing well, but they're kind of taking it out of our pockets. But it's, uh, I don't know. And then a lot of people might think like, we'll just go to a different platform. But unfortunately, all these other platforms, I mean, I started a, an account on Rumble um, a little while ago. And it's like, maybe I'm lucky if I get 100 to 300 views. Like it's it's really just, it's not even comparable. Like there's not a lot of people that are moving towards these other platforms. Yeah, it's definitely, we, we have a Rumble too. Uh, and it's, Basically, anything we upload to YouTube goes to Rumble. Mm -hmm. And I think I actually got a notification the other day that I got my first comment on any video on Rumble. Yeah. Uh, So it's (laughs) like, yeah, it's not as widespread. And YouTube, they're not going to flat out ban it because, like you said, they make too much money on the revenue. Even if you have a non-monetized video, they're still running ads on it Mm -hmm. that they're going to get paid for. Exactly. So so it doesn't matter. And they know people are searching that. So, I mean, you, you, you don't kill the golden goose. You know, yeah. and and they know that there is such a large population of people that are searching for these things. Uh, and it's, you know, the thing that gets me too, though, is the lack of common sense. Uh, and what I mean by that is if they really think about it, having tutorials and things of that sort on YouTube on how to do something properly, Mm -hmm. how to do something safely, how to better operate something, being able to have all that stuff readily available where somebody that is seeking knowledge and they're like, okay, I need to know more about this. And I have this tool at my disposal that can teach me to do it properly, safely and everything. And there's, they're getting dinged and they're getting demonetized so that people don't want to put those things up anymore. So it's, uh, it's, I, I don't know. They're, they're really, I, I don't even know what the words are They're They're making sure that everything fits their narrative and their perspective and their, and you know, what they want things to be. They don't like guns. Therefore they're mm-hmm. limiting access to. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that was actually a really good point is, you know, people look for, you know, to these platforms for education and then, you know, and you want to make sure that they're doing it the proper way, especially when it comes to firearms and assembling your gun. I mean, how many people and not to bring a lot of light to this, but how many people do you know or have you heard of that tried to take apart their gun? They didn't verify it was unloaded and they shot themselves in the leg. And so it's like you want to make sure that these people like have these these YouTubers that are like, OK, before we start, you want to verify that your gun's unloaded. This is how you do that. 
you know, I mean, it's just, it's really frustrating and they make it where it sounds so great. Like from an outsider's perspective, like, well, yeah, we don't want our kids to see that, but they're doing so much more than just, you know, age restricting any of this stuff. And I don't just, even want to talk about what their kids are capable of seeing online. Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, don't even get me speaking, started. Somebody being handling the gun in a safe environment under controlled conditions is way better than some of the stuff they're being subjected to. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said. I don't know. Hopefully one of these days we will have another platform to go to. But I guess at this point, unfortunately, we are sort of at the mercy of YouTube. So just a heads up for any content creators, just make sure that you guys are following these because I would hate for anyone to lose their channel and have it deleted. Yeah. Well, us being a manufacturer, it's, it's a little, I, I don't know that it's necessarily different. Uh, but we hit a point a long time ago, we could have been monetized and I turned it on and I'm like, Oh, let's see what this is all about. And I'm like, Oh, this is kind of cool. We get a little bit of money, but we don't need it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, cause we're just trying to get information out there. So yeah. anymore, whenever I upload a video, I just click not monetized. Don't care. Yeah. Uh, and then if something comes up, I'm like, don't review. I want as few of eyes yeah. uh, inside the Google <sighs> and the YouTube machine on this thing as possible. And what a lot of people also don't realize is a lot of times when you ask for something to be reviewed, it's still going through an algorithm again. You're not Mm -hmm. actually getting a person to look at it. And if you do get a person to look at it, chances are they're ignorant on the topic. So they'll find more. They got scared (laughs) by what it is and like, oh, how did this even make it through the second review? This Mm -hmm. should just be deleted. And yeah, yeah, it's that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I run with the mindset that, okay, I just try to stay off as many radars as I can on that platform because yeah, if it gets any type of notification, I'm like, ah, I'm not going to dispute it, but it, it's my channel still up and that video still up. So, okay, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, now it's time to wrap up iTunes reviews. We don't have any reviews to read today, but keep in mind, if you guys leave a review, I am now going to be giving away a pair of Gators glasses. So really easy to do so. If you have an iPhone, search for the podcast app, search for Gun Funny, scroll down, you'll see where you can leave a review. And once I get 10 reviews, I'm going to draw a lucky winner. So good luck with that. Also, just to wrap up, if you guys want to support Balancing the Rockies, my newest endeavor, uh, the Independent Expenditure Committee, you can go to dragomans.com and or there's links on my social media as well and purchase tickets in order to uh, have a chance of winning. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of cool prizes, including night vision and stuff. So definitely check that out as well. And then you guys could also just go to gunfunny.com. There's links to everything there for Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all that good stuff. If you enjoy the show and you want to support it, I would greatly appreciate it. You can become a Patreon. You could either go to patreon.com or you could just go directly to the website, gunfunny.com and click on the support the show link. And then also I wanted to thank the $25 Patreon to our sake holsters, Daniel Treadwell, Keith Calamore, Daniel Lee, Nick Theodosian, Tristan Smith, Melissa Writings, William Nave, and Patrick Comer. And then of course, Jon Snow, who is the king of the Patreon. And Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for educating us and letting us know what is going on over at CMMG. Can you just remind us once again where people can find CMMG on the internet? Our website is cmmg.com and most of our socials are going to either be at CMMG or at CMMG Inc. All right, perfect. All right, well, thank you so much. And guys, I will talk to you next week. Want to send feedback? Tell us about a company or anything else. Go to gunfunny.com forward slash contact.